Joining me now is retired four-star General Joseph Votel. He's a former commander of U.S. Central Command and a distinguished senior fellow at the Middle East Institute. So, General, the U.S. and the Middle East now are all bracing for what form this retaliation by Iran could take. Should we expect their response to come sooner rather than later? What do we know and what should we expect, given that this is a Hamas leader killed inside Tehran? Yeah, thanks. It's great to be with you. Well, I think we should be paying attention to what the Iranians and what Hezbollah is, is saying and what they've signaled over the last a uh, couple of days, and again today, is that there will be a response and that it will likely be a coordinated response, meaning that it won't be just something that comes from Iran, but will likely include uh, other components of the Iranian uh, axis of resistance. So that could be Hezbollah, that could be Hamas, that could be other Shia militia groups in the region that could be responding, it could be the Houthis. So th we should be expecting this, and uh, they've, they've told us that. I mean, to that end, though, back in April, we saw how well the U.S. and Israel were able to defend against that massive wave of Iranian drones, kind of the last time we were in a similar situation. Should we expect a similar response this time around? Sort of, is that the one big punch that Iran can throw in this moment? Well, I think that's the baseline. Uh, so as I kind of look at it, I mean, this uh, this was a, a pretty good exemplar of how they would likely respond. So I think that that is a, that is a template. Uh, but I think it's important to appreciate that Iran has learned from that. They have gone back and looked at the lessons learned from that April strike and uh, where they could have done better. And they will likely try to uh, improve upon that. Uh, they will look for vulnerabilities. They will consider timing in this. They will look at the volume of fires in this. Over 300 missiles and, uh, and uh, uncrewed systems were used last time, so, uh, which, which were fairly effectively defeated by uh, the Israelis and the U.S. and other partners in that, in that coalition. So they, they will definitely be looking at how they maximize uh, impact this time around. Um, the Pentagon said today they will be making force posture moves to bolster force protection in that special kind of military jargon. What do you expect that will look like? What kind of assets need to be moved to the region? What's not already there after nearly a year of war in that region? Yeah, well, uh, a lot of the forces that, that uh, are in the, in the Middle East are very transitory. They come in, they depart, just as we've seen with a number of our naval and maritime assets that have been in the region. So, you know, first and foremost, uh, the U.S. will be looking at how we make sure we protect our installations and uh, diplomatic posts in the area so that they are they are protected. That That's important to, to, to do right up front. But in addition, we'll be looking at air defense systems. We'll be looking at potentially the movement of additional uh, fighter aircraft into the area and, of course, the movement of uh, of naval uh, resources into the area. Uh, naval resources, of course, give us great flexibility uh, to respond to this, and they take a little bit of time to get there. So, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I think we're likely to see uh, those types of capabilities going into the region. I also want to get your reaction to some of the reporting about the death of that Hamas political leader inside Tehran. The New York Times says that Israel was able to smuggle an explosive device into the complex two months ago. Now, Israel hasn't taken responsibility for that attack, but, you know, somebody did it. So I guess my question to you is, what would it say about Israel's ability to penetrate inside Iran, their covert capabilities, to pull off something like this? Well, despite what happened on October 7th, uh, Israel has a very well-developed intelligence and special operations capability. So it does not surprise me that they would have this kind of capacity to do this, to target very precisely, just as they did in Beirut uh, last weekend. That strike against the uh, Hezbollah commander was very precise. It was very targeted. It was limited uh, and uh, really uh, done quite well, at least from a, from a military standpoint. So I think I think the Israelis have extraordinary capabilities here, and, and certainly they're they're demonstrating it with uh, with with these actions over the last several days. So professional from a military standpoint, but from a strategic standpoint, what do you make of the decision to kill basically the person who you're negotiating with for ceasefire talks on the Hamas side, especially in the context of the other attack uh, in Beirut? 
Well, I think as as our president has said, it wasn't it wasn't helpful. If if your priority is trying to get your hostages home and to trying to end the conflict in Gaza, this was probably not the approach. Uh, what that tells me is that uh, Israel is at a place where they prioritize uh, punishing those who are responsible for these attacks and for the uh, the variety of attacks that have taken place on uh, on Israel over over other matters that they have. Uh, um, and so I, I think that's what that what it tells us. It certainly it certainly wasn't helpful to uh, the the ceasefire negotiations. Taken together, then does that all point towards further escalation? Well, I, th I think yeah, I mean certainly we're in a we're in a cycle right now where the next steps are going to be military responses and escalation in in some regards. Uh, I think both sides will attempt to operate in a in a way that. Uh, is below uh, kind of the accepted threshold uh, that is in place now, which was really reestablished last April with exchange between the between the two countries. But yeah, the next set of <clears throat> the next set of responses uh, and activities will be military. It doesn't mean that there's not opportunities for uh, diplomacy and moving back into discussions, which is where this ultimately needs to needs to go. This this like many conflicts will not be resolved militarily. I feel like we've been in similar positions several times during the course of this conflict where we've appeared to be on the brink of things perhaps escalating into a wider war and everyone involved has kind of taken more rational steps back from the edge. Is there anything in your mind that makes you think this time might be different? Uh, I, don't, I don't know. I mean, as, as you pointed out, I mean, it's, there's been a lot of twists and turns in this conflict, and uh, each of these each of these sides are acting in their own interests as they assess them and uh, and calculating their own risk for the things that they are they are doing. Uh, so I, I, you know, yeah, I think it's really hard to to. Um, to, to project what's next. I, what I do think is I, I don't think either side, Iran and its and its and its network or Israel wants a long protracted conflict, uh, you know, of conventional scale between both of these, both of these, uh, both of these parties. That's not in anyone's interest. But yet they find themselves in a situation where they do have to respond. They do have to deal with the situations in which they're they're presented. All right, General Joseph Votel, we have to leave it there. Thank you for sharing your expertise with us. Thanks. Good to be with you. Thanks for watching. Stay updated about breaking news and top stories on the NBC News app or follow us on social media.